In this video, I want to introduce the idea of matrix notation, where we now are actually using vectors, like column and row vectors, to represent our states, rather than only using Dirac notation. Now, many students find this easier to work with and that they have an easier time understanding it than originally working only with Dirac notation, but there are reasons why Dirac notation is really useful. We can later get to very complicated states um, and in further studies of like graduate quantum mechanics, we then really use Dirac notation, all of those ket states, and we don't so much use matrix notation. So it is really worth getting comfortable fully working in bracket notation before moving into matrix notation. And if you find this easier, don't only, only use it. Please try to be comfortable with both. So the basic idea is that when we have our Z basis, so Remember, we need to specify the basis we're working with, and it's going to be spin up and spin down in Z. Our ket state for spin up is a column uh, uh, matrix where it's 1, 0, and for spin down, it's 0, 1. So you might think about this as like x and y. So directionally, we know that x and y are in fact orthogonal. They are perpendicular to one another. And they, an uh, x vector and a y vector would in fact span a two-dimensional plane. Similarly here, spin up and spin down, are perpendicular to one another and we're going to be able to construct any um, state in this vector space out of a sum of these with a complex scalar coefficients. Now one caveat is we have to think about what it means to then have the corresponding bra state. And I've said before that these are different uh, vector spaces. And when we write it in matrix notation, this becomes more clear. That in fact, we are taking the adjoint. We are transforming, right? We're going from a column vector to a row vector. And where you can think about this, if you start to get confused, is we can do something like this, this inner product. And if we have this as our row vector, 1, 0, multiplied by our column vector, when we go row, column, that equals 1. That's interesting. That works out, this agrees, this is self-consistent. Now what if we actually went, and this is looking ahead a little bit, and went in the wrong order? We did our ket and then our bra. So that's actually going to flip these. We have one zero and then one zero. But notice this went row column and now this is column row. This is in fact going to give us a matrix result. And first we have row, column. This gives us one. Then we have row, column, zero. Row, column, zero. Row, column, zero. So notice that the order matters. So this is one reason why it's really important to know which of these is our, our row, which of these is our column, and to not just flip the order of them around. So we will actually see elements like this later. This is actually going to be a projection operator. So this is something useful. We haven't gotten to it yet. I just want to make the point that order matters and keeping in mind row horizontal vector versus vertical vector matters. So now, as one more example, let's go through taking our spin up and down in the x direction and re-expressing these as our, our vectors, our matrix notation, rather than just in the cat. So the first thing to, to notice is we have these normalized, and we can just bring that out front. And now I'm going to say, OK, what was x? Uh, spin up is 1, 0. And then spin down is 0, 1. And I'll just do these in parallel. So uh, again, we have 1, 0. And then we have minus 0, 1. So now we can add these together. These are in the same vector space. And again, that's kind of that more theoretical mathematical idea, but the point is we can add these. You can't add a row plus a, a, a column. That doesn't make any sense. So we're left with 1 over square root of 2, 1, 1. And for the spin down, we have 1 over square root of 2, and we then have 1, and, and notice this here, minus 1. So these are going to be our spin up and our spin down in the x direction states when they're expressed in the z basis. So I keep using a lot of this technical mathematical terminology that might seem completely superfluous, but I promise as we move into operators and move into chapter two, a lot of these ideas are important. So I'm trying to plant the seed so that it makes more sense later.